next we have the next sequence method in python is tuple okay so tuple is same as list one list and tuple are basically same the only difference in tuple is tuples are immutable okay in tuple once we create a tuple we won't be able to perform anything on that okay literally it's kind of freezing that we won't be able to add elements or remove elements or we won't be able to change elements we can't do anything on tuple okay but we can access them so same as list in a uh, tuple items are order immutable and allow duplicates but in case of lists, items are ordered mutable, like we'll be able to change item objects. And it will also allow duplicates, both like uh, it will share same properties. The other two properties are same between list and tuple. The only difference is uh, lists are mutable, means they are changeable, and uh, tuples are immutable. These are kind of unchangeable, okay? How we can create a tuple? So we need to use these curly braces instead of square braces, which we'll be doing for uh, list, okay? And uh, or else we can use this tuple keyword, okay? I think tuple, uh, this is kind of a small mistake over here. Like it should be enclosed in list, okay? Tuple of, like inside this uh, uh, tuple method, we need to pass an iterable. It may be list or it may be set anything, okay? This is incorrect, just ignore it. I'll be correcting that, okay? So let's uh, try creating a tuple now. Okay. This is my tuple one. One comment. Okay. I can do either this way or I can also do it either this way. Let me do both ways. Okay. Tuple two and sir, I think I have done same thing over here. Okay. U P L E tuple of and I need to pass any iterable it may be list or it may be set anything okay so now I have created two tuples uh, which one is tuple one and one is tuple two so I can perform all sort of indexing operations here I'll be able to access uh, elements using index positions okay I'll be able to access them. I'll be able to perform slicing here. Like I can perform all sort of indexing operations, which I have uh, done in the list. Okay. Now your task here is just revisit the list indexing. Whatever uh, indexing concepts we have covered in list and strings, just revisit them and try to apply them on this tuples. Okay. Just try it yourself, like uh, instead of me covering it again. Okay. And let's say if I'm trying to do any assignments here. Let's say I'm trying to change word three to like a number three to word three. Okay. You can see tuple object does not support as item assignment. The reason being tuples are strictly immutable. We won't be able to do anything on that. We won't be able to change items or add or remove elements. Okay. Now let's say we have only two methods over here. One will be count and one will be index. Nothing else. Tuples won't provide any other methods. Okay. But we can perform joining of tuples. Okay. If you see here, I have just joined tuple one and two. So the reason being, we are we won't be able to change the tuple once it is created. But we can perform operations. Now this tuple one plus tuple two, this will be stored in different memory. Okay. So if you observe the IDs, tuple one, tuple two, tuple three, three are kind of stored in different memories. So this is this this will do nothing, but this will just take two tuple one plus tuple two, and it will iteratively add items from tuple two to tuple one, and it will be assigned to a new variable which will be stored in this memory location. Okay. So what like these tuples? These are kind of very useful when we need to kind of have some static information okay let's say we are having some uh, uh, strictly some uh, constant information which shouldn't be changed or no one should be able to like will be able to access them 
So in that case, we can just use tuples instead of list or uh, set. Okay, can just kind of uh, uh, avoid that using list, and we can use tuples so that each and every item which we have defined over there will be unchangeable strictly. Okay, and creating tuple with only one item, right? If you see here in the line one, what I have did is I have done tuple is equal to seventy nine. Okay. And if I'm trying to find the type of that, okay. Could you guys let me know what will be the type of first line here? Like I have done tuple is equal to 79, right? What will be the type over there? Type of that 79. Any guesses? Practically, okay. We have this. I'm doing tuple one, right? Let's say I'm creating tuple 3 and it contains only one element which is 79 okay now tuple 3 i'll try to print tuple 3 you can observe this i have created tuple with single element 79 but when i am trying to access that i am kind of getting 79 as a number and if i am checking for this you can see uh Type of tuple 3 will be integer here. Even though we have initialized a tuple with single uh, element item in that, at the end, the type of the element is kind of item type of this tuple is turned out to be integer. So the reason being we can't perform like uh, create tuples with single element in this way. Okay. What we need to do here is we just need to append comma. Okay, we have this 79, right? And then comma. So now if I'm performing this again, you can see this. The, now the tuple, like now the type of this tuple 3 is actual tuple, which we are kind of expecting. The reason being, let's say I have this 79 over here. If it assign it as a tuple, then let's say I have performed something over here, some arithmetic operation. So in arithmetic, we have this parenthesis and uh, sort of things, right? For, for performing the arithmetic operations, where we'll be having this order of precedence, like uh, uh, like numbers inside this uh, bracket should be evaluated first. So that's the reason Python will be treating this 79 without comma as a normal integer, okay? And it will perform the actual uh, this thing here, arithmetic operations or something. So for that re for that reason, whenever we are creating a tuple with single item, we always need to have this comma over here. Okay. So we must add comma after item else this will be considered like whichever thing. Let's say I define some name here, like some name like uh, um, Mahesh, then this will be kind of treated as a string type. So similar to list, tuple can hold any type of data within this. Like it, there is no restrictions on data types. It can hold any types of data, integers or strings or lists or uh, dictionaries, anything. Okay. And indexing, as I said, it is kind of exactly similar as list. There is no change in this reverse indexing. Each and everything is similar to list. And we can kind of delete tuple from memory using this delete keyword. Okay, we can just use delete of tuple and it will completely delete that uh, tuple from the uh, uh, memory. Okay, I'm going to delete tuple of three. And if I try to access tuple three, it will throw up an error saying that uh, tuple three is not defined. So delete will be common for each and every data type. So starting from integers, like simple variables where a is equal to eight, Delete will be kind of uh, works in the same way for each and every data type in Python. So unpacking tuple. So we have this tuple and we are kind of having values in that, right? We are holding some values in that. So that is that process is called packing. Okay. We are kind of packing things into tuple. And when we need to unpack them, uh, like when we need to extract values, like the process of extracting values from tuples is called unpacking. Okay. This packing and unpacking, this is kind of one of the most important concept while we are working with functions. Okay. While we are working with functions and classes, this will kind of 
uh, become very handy to return multiple values with proper uh, structure and to extract them into the uh, uh, while uh, like calling that function. So we'll cover that part later on. So uh, if number of values are less than number of uh, uh, these things variables. OK, let's say I, I'm, I have created tuple with one, two, three, four, five, and I'm trying to uh, unpack them. And let's say if I have this, uh, let's uh, try it out practically again. OK. I have this tuple. Tuple four and I have one. I have five elements in this. OK, in tuple four, I have five items. And I'm trying to unpack them. And let's say I have given A comma B comma C and I'm trying to unpack it. This is kind of unpacking tuple. You just need to define variables and you just need to assign it to tuple so that it will automatically unpack them into different variables, okay? So you can see this too many values to unpack. So the reason being, we are trying to assign only three variables, but actually tuple contains five variables here, right? So that's the reason we are kind of running into this error, saying that too many values to unpack. So in this case, what you can do is you just need to include that star here. OK, if you include that star over here, if I try to access a comma B, sorry, B comma C now. So you can see that one is assigned to A, two is assigned to B and all the other three, which are three, four, five, they'll be assigned to C uh, as a list. OK. As a list. So I can perform same thing. Uh, like if I wish I need to hold multiple elements in B and I want only uh, C to be the last value, like five values should be assigned to C. I can perform same thing again, okay? What this will be doing, it will assign one to A and C to five. And all the elements in between, those will be assigned to the uh, B. And if I'm adding one more here, which will be D, and if I'm doing this again, you can see now four will be assigned to C, five will be assigned to D and two comma three will be assigned to B. OK, when we are working with functions, uh, this will be kind of become very handy. So we might kind of uh, we might need to have this A value which we are returning from function and all these things we we are kind of want to just ignore them. So in that cases, we can kind of uh, have only a here and we can kind of just give star underscore and what this will be doing this will just kind of take value a so just kind of take value a which will be one and uh, you can also print this variable which will be kind of uh, uh, two three four five so which this indicates that we are not using this this is just a placeholder and we won't be using this uh, particular variable where we are kind of returning the rest four values from the function. OK, these are the two things, how, how to pack and unpacking. Again, looping. Looping is exactly same as the uh, list, OK? You can perform all types of loopings while operations using list, and you can also create uh, this, uh, what you say, uh, uh, tuples using comprehension as well, OK? OK, now this is let me. Mm. This is coming up with generator object. OK. I think it's not creating the actual trouble. We might need to. Uh, manually perform the operations. Okay, we, we, this is kind of creating a generator object instead of the actual tuple which we are intended to do. And uh, we just need to uh, assign it to the tuple actually, okay? Then perform all sort of uh, uh, looping operations and uh, these operations for I in uh, tuple, print I sort of things. All these things will work as same as this, okay? And we have covered this uh, joining tuples as well using plus operator. And we can multiply uh, using it. OK, let's say I wanted to 
have a tuple which will be my duplication of three. Okay, and okay. So if you see, this is the tuple one, two, three, four, five, and tuple four into three has created a new tuple where this tuple four is kind of uh, uh, repeated three times. It's kind of just multiplies this tuple for three times and it will assign it to the new variable, which will be some other tuple. Okay. Then we will be able to work on only this operation. If we try to do multiplication between tuples or other things, it won't work. Okay. We need to multiply it only using a tuple uh, like this one. What do you say? Uh, integer. It will throw up an error. Tuple 3, I think we have deleted it, right? It won't be do like it will accept only integer here okay for multiplication of tuples and count and index as i said it is the uh, same as this so count will be kind of counting how many times a number is occurred okay now we have this tuple uh four right i can just count using number let's say i need to count how many times number three is present you can just choose uh, count or else index okay Index will return the index position of the number three. Okay, this is it for tuples. Like, okay, now we have sets. This is the next sequence type, which is similar to tuples and uh, lists. Okay, so sets are basically an ordered collection of items. So I think sets you might have uh, came across these sets during our high school mathematics. Right. This is the same sets which we have, which used to learn during our high school days. Okay. So set is basically an order in the collection of items. Okay. Will be kind of uh, set will be holding items, same as list and tuple, but items here are unordered. Okay. There won't be any specific or definite order. Like they can be in any sort of order over here. Okay. And how we can create set. Okay. Uh, we, we can use this flower brackets or set keyword for creating the uh, set object in Python. Okay, let's say I have set one and I can create it like one. Okay, I just kind of have, I can just create using this uh, uh, keyword or uh, I can just use other keyword like. So I can also create it using this uh, set of, and I should pass it as a iterable. Okay, all these methods will accept iterable list of tuple of set of all these things will accept iterable inside, which will be nothing but a object which is through which we can kind of iter. Now let's say I have this with me. Okay. So these are the set one and set two, which I have created. I can just uh, create set one and set two using the, any of this method, okay? And set items, as I said, there won't be any specific order, okay? You can't guarantee that set items will be in order, like we have defined in this way, right? So whenever we are accessing that, like it may be any other, it may be same order, like as long as we are accessing it or in between the order may change. Set one guarantee the order of items which we have passed to the set, okay? And items are unchangeable. So just remember, sets are mutable, okay? We can perform operations. We can uh, add items, we can remove items, we can perform updates, but it's like we cannot uh, kind of change items actually. Like we cannot kind of change items, okay? Once let's say we have this set of, we have defined set here, right? We have one, one, two, three, four. Let's say I need to remove this two here and I need to replace it with uh, word two. I won't be able to do that because items within sets are kind of unchangeable, not immutable, but we'll be able to add things. Okay, we can add items to set or we can remove items from set. Okay, but we won't be able to uh, make any changes or any assignments, new assignments to the existing items. Okay, I, I'll show that practically. And duplicates not allowed. So, uh, 
uh, we have seen that list and tuples accepts duplicates. They can kind of allow duplicates. But in case of sets, duplicates are not allowed. Like sets won't allow any sort of duplicates in that. Like uh, it will always uh, kind of du deduplicate things. Okay. And let's say I have this created set one and set two, right? If I try to print set one and set two now. You can see here, even though I have given duplicate values here, when I have created set, all the duplicates are kind of uh, are discarded and it will store only unique values. OK, it won't store any sort of duplicate values in this. And true and one are considered as same value. OK, let's say if I have here. Uh, sorry. True and if, uh, let's say if I have here. False as well as zero. So set will treat one and true as the same thing, basically, because in Boolean types we have seen right that true represents like one represents true and uh, zero represents false, right? So if I try to print set one and two now again, you can see that it haven't uh, like it removed this true and false. The reason being it will treat uh, zero and false as same thing and uh, one and true as the same thing. Okay, same value. Uh, and same as the lists and uh, uh, tuples, even set can store any sort of data types. Like there is no restriction on uh, data types which we are storing in set. Uh, like it can store any value basically, uh, any sort of data types. It can store set within that and or else uh, list within set sort of things. Okay. And one more thing, sets are kind of, uh, we won't be able to perform any uh, indexing on set, okay? We won't be able to access elements using sets. See, if you see set object is non-subscriptable. So the reason being sets can't be kind of uh, indexed, okay? The reason is sets are unordered, right? Items in set are unordered so it won't guarantee order every time we are say now i have performed set one of three currently it is holding number two here in set one third position sorry number three only right zero one two three yeah number three in third position okay it is holding number three in third position so next time when i'm accessing the same thing like this set won't guarantee if we are getting number three or not it may give any number like it may give eight so it won't guarantee like order, order of items within set, right? So that's the reason we won't be able to perform any indexing operations on set. We won't be able to access any items using index, okay? But uh, I have said, right, like uh, the only way we can access uh, elements is we can use some sort of loops here. Like if our item in set one, just print out by, okay? It will just print uh, each and every item. It rate only. Okay, sorry, item right. It will just print. We can loop through list and for adding elements to list. So even though we, we won't be able to perform any operation. So let's say I'm performing set one now. I'm trying to change the third element and I need to replace it with uh, number like word three. If I perform this, it will throw error showing that set objects does not support item assignment. Same as tuple. OK, we won't be able to make any changes, any assignments to the existing elements of the set. But we'll be able to add item or remove item or we're kind of update items, update, uh, add a, other uh, list or other set as a wall to this uh, set one. So we'll, we'll see set one dot add. I'm adding uh, what you say number 10 to set one. And if I print it out, you can see number 10 is added to set one, right? And I can also perform remove. Remove and I'm removing one from set one. Okay. And if I see set one now, one is removed from set one. So Add is used for adding single items. OK, we can only add single item using add method. So using update method, we can kind of add uh, other iterables as well, multiple items. OK, 
Okay, I think we don't have this one available here. Now, if I see set one, I have updated it with set two. If you, you can see all the uh, unique items from set one and set two are kind of uh, uh, updated here. So all the items from set two are updated in set one using this update method. So it is same as uh, extend method, which we'll be using for list, right? We'll be using uh, like uh, list dot uh, append for adding single element, right? And update for, sorry, extend for uh, adding a list of uh, items. So same here, add is for single item and update is for uh, multiple iterables, okay? Removing items from list, okay? We have this two ways here. So we have this set one dot remove of one and also we have set one dot remove of uh, discard as well, right? So now let's say I have set one dot remove of one. So we don't have one here, okay? And if I execute this, it will throw key error saying that one is not found in this set, okay? This key error implicates that this one is not part of this set, hence it won't be able to remove that. If I perform same thing using discard, you can see it won't throw up any error. See, the, what the main difference between remove and discard is, a uh, remove method, if if it, if it if, uh, item is present in set, it will directly remove that. If item is not present, it will throw error, key error, saying that uh, the particular item is not part of a uh, set. In case of discard, it won't throw any error. Let's say I'm removing uh, three and I'm printing set one again. So it will remove three, same as remove, but now three has been already removed from set one, right? Now if I try to remove it again, it won't throw any error. It will just uh, do nothing. In case of element is an uh, item is not found in the uh, set. So it's kind of, uh, Mostly we can make use of this uh, discard only. So the reason being like it won't break our program, right? Instead of a uh, remove, which will kind of break our program if item is not found over in the list, okay? Same, remove will raise error and uh, discard won't. Pop also can be used. So same as list, we can use pop here, right? Set one dot pop. And I'll print set one. So we can also use pop which is a kind of similar to uh, list pop only. And if I'm trying to perform this, you can see uh, like we can't guarantee which item is being removed. It can remove any element randomly pop. We won't be able to specify like some item over here. Okay, it won't uh, accept that. But in case of list, we can provide the item here, right? But in case of set, we won't be able to specify the item which needs to be removed. It will randomly remove any item from the set. Okay. Then we have this clear method, right? So clear will kind of clear the entire list. It will just empty the list. Okay. Set one dot clear. So now if I try to access set one, there won't it will set one will be kind of empty set now. So same this clear method will be applicable for list as well. Even in the list, we can use this clear method. I think I forgot to cover this uh, clear method in list. Uh, even the clear method of list will do same thing, that it will just empty the list. It will remove all the elements and it will just uh, retain that placeholder of set object or list object. And then delete. As I said, delete, uh, we have this delete, right? It will permanently delete the set from memory, okay? And then joining list. So, uh, unlike, unlike list, sorry, it should be set, right? Sorry, my bad. So, unlike uh, lists, uh, we can perform different types of joining join operations in the list. Okay. There are many, uh, there are two list types, right? Which will be uni union of list and intersection of list. I think we have. We know about these concepts. I, we have came across this thing during our school days as well, right? So what we what here union will be doing is union will return all the items from both sets. Okay. Set one union set two. Let's say I have set one and set two where I have these things. So now I have set one and set two, right? 
set one union is set one union set two is nothing but set one union set two. So we have this union operation, right? Which will be like in our mathematics, we will be performing union of sets and intersection of sets. For intersection, we'll use intersect like inverted U symbol, which is a uh, inverted U. So this set one dot union will perform the same operation, like as similar to our normal uh, like set uh, union function. Okay, it should be dot over here. So set one dot union will join two sets. Okay, basically it will take all the elements from set one and set two, and it will create a new list. So union and update are kind of doing same thing. Okay. But uh, union is the method which we should opt if we need to perform uh, joining between sets. Okay, we can go with union. And then we have this. Uh, uh, we have this update, right? Same as I said, uh, like update will be performing same thing. And then we have this intersection update. So intersection update, what this will be doing, keeps only items common in both sets, okay? We have this intersect and intersected update, right? Intersect. Set one of intersect of set two, what will get output here? I think it will so set one dot intersection of set two uh, okay i think set let me redefine the set again and i'm removing this union method so you can see set one dot intersection set two we have this seven eight nine elements in common right between set one and set two so it will give us seven eight and nine and we have this intersection update, right, of set two. So it won't do anything. Like it, re like uh, it returns nothing. But if we try to access set one now, you can see only these three elements are present in set one. So what intersection is? Intersection gives us common elements between two sets, common items between two sets. In case of intersection update, it will take common items between two sets and it will replace like update list with those common elements okay intersection update it is kind of updating set one with common items between set one and set two okay now again i am redefining this set one and set two now we have this set one dot you can access all the methods here whichever methods we have in set you can kind of find it over here. We have this uh, all the methods available. Now we have this symmetric difference of set two. So this symmetric difference, what this will be giving, this will give uncommon elements. Okay. This will give uh we have this symmetric difference on it's only right. Okay. You check here, it will give us uncommon elements. We have this 7, 8, 9 in common, right, between two sets. So it won't include them. And it will give us only uncommon elements between two sets, set one and set two. Same happens with symmetric difference update as well. Okay. Okay, so symmetric difference update also will be doing same thing, but it will kind of replace, it will kind of actually update set one with uncommon elements between set one and two. Okay, intersection, intersection update, symmetric difference, symmetric difference update. Essentially, both are like everything works in the same way, just that update method will update the existing set. Okay, and then we have difference. Okay. So if you see, we have here a uh, difference, right? So what difference will be doing is set one dot difference of set two, right? So it will subtract set one from set two, basically, as name suggests. And it will include only elements that are not present in set two. Okay. Set uh, difference, what difference will be doing from all the elements in set two, it will return only elements that are not present in the uh, set two. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, set two. If you see here, 
we have one, two, three, four, five, six over here in set one and set two, right? Set one, set two. Uh, if you see here, uh, we have this set one and set two, right? And if I am performing difference between set one and set two, you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it is kind of uh, trying to derive difference between set one and set two, and whatever elements present in set one that are common with set two, those will be removed. Okay. Here we have this seven, eight, nine from set one, which are present in uh, set two. So it will discard these things and it will result like it will return only one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Because these are the items which are present in set one, but not in set two. Same happens with uh, us in reverse order. Let me do this in reverse order. Now we have set two difference of set one. So now the output of this operation will be all the elements which are present in set two, but not in set one. Those will be returned. Okay, here if I do this now again, except this seven, eight, nine, we'll get all other elements. If you see, we got zero, 10, 11, 12, 13. The reason being these are in set two, but not in set one. So this is the difference method. Okay, we can perform same thing. We have this difference update as well. Even this works the same way. So it will kind of directly update instead of returning a new set, it will directly update a set two with the difference elements which are not present in set one but present in set two. Okay. And then I think we have covered this symmetric difference as well, right? That uncommon uh, elements will be kind of retained. Between so just uh, uh, remember this. Symmetric difference will keep uncommon values from both sets, okay? But difference, normal difference, normal difference will kind of keep uncommon, like uncommon elements from set one, whichever from which set we are kind of performing a difference operation. So it will retain only uncommon elements from set two, which are not present in set one. In case of symmetric difference, it will take uncommon elements from both set one and set two. Just remember that one. Okay. Difference will always retain uncommon elements from the left side of the different operation. And then we have other set methods as well, right? We have this copy method similar to list copy. We can kind of uh, uh, just use uh, this copy method to create a copy of the set. And difference update and difference, I think we have covered them, right? Like difference will kind of returns uh, different. And difference update, it will kind of perform in place update. It will update the set on which we are performing this operation. And then we have is disjoint. So is disjoint is the method. We have this disjoint sets and we have subsets and supersets. All of these are kind of related to mathematical sets, which we have covered, like which we know during our school years, right? So is disjoint is nothing but it will check if both sets are disjoint or not, okay? So disjoint here is what is if like sets are disjoint when there are no common elements between two sets. Okay, two, two sets should be completely different. Only like then we'll be calling uh, those sets as uh, disjoint sets. And then we have each subset. So each subset method will be true like when all the elements of set one are present in set two. Let's say I'm doing set one dot each subset of set two. Then what the statement indicates that set one is subset of set two. That set two will be a superset and set one will be subset. Okay. All the elements of set one should be present in set two. Same with superset. In superset, if all the elements of set two are present in set one. Okay. This is kind of works in reverse way. This is same as subset, but set two, whatever all the elements of set two should be present in set one. Okay, let's uh, do that practically. Let's say we have set one. One, two, three, four, five, right? We have set two. We have set one and set two. Now I'll be doing set one dot uh, is disjoint. 
of set two. I am checking if both set one or set two are disjoint. It will return false. The reason be we have common elements in this and in this. Let's say now what I am doing here. I'm just having some 10 over here and I'm just trying to do this again. OK, you can see that this is true. The reason be uh, set one and set two are completely different. They don't have any common elements and. Is. Subset, OK, now I have again set one and two and uh, I'm trying to check if set one is subset of set two. It uh, it returns false. The reason being we have this one, two, three, four, five here, but in set two, we don't have five available. So set one won't be subset of set two. It's kind of basically membership. OK, we are just checking if set one has a whole is member of set two. Now I have the set one, set two again, and I have five also added here. Now you can see set one dot subset of set two will provide us true. The reason being uh, all the elements of this set are present part of this set. So this is subset of this main set. OK, now if I perform super set here. OK. It will return false. The reason being super set. Uh, if you see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, and here also we have one, two, three, four, five. But in this set, we have additional uh, items. So super set. Uh, if I perform this again with set two dot is super set of set one. Now we'll get true. The reason be this set one is subset of set two. So ultimately, set two will become super set of set one. Okay, understood, right? And if I perform subset here is subset of set one, it will return false because we have this six, seven, eight, nine, which are not present in uh, set one, right? So here, basically, uh, if set if one set is subset of set two, then set two will automatically be superset of set one. Just remember that way. Set one is subset of set two. This implies set two is superset of set one. OK. And then we have this. Uh, the final one, which is frozen set. So frozen set, as the name suggests, it will kind of freeze the set. So currently sets are, we can kind of add or remove elements from this set, right? sorry, set, right? So when we make that set frozen using this frozen set method, then it will freeze a set. There won't be any sort of, like we won't be able to add elements or remove elements. We won't be able to do anything. We can just need to give frozen set of set one or set two. So now I have this set three, which will be the frozen set. I'm just freezing this set two and I'm assigning it to set three. Now I won't be able to perform any operations on it. I won't be able to add or remove items. It will just say frozen set object has no attribute. OK, but we can perform that indexing operations and other operations. Sorry, not indexing. My bad, my bad. So looping operations are like for i in set three, print of five. So you can perform all sort of looping operations, but set will be literally frozen. We won't be able to do any sort of things or any modifications for frozen set. Okay. Okay. This is for today. So I think we have covered tuple and sets today, right? So. Okay, yesterday, as I said, let's say if I have list one, okay. This one, one, six. Just a second. OK, sorry. Uh, so let's say we have this list one and for copying list, as I said, we can't uh, kind of simply assign it. List two is equal to list one, right? We, we need to actually use this copy method for copying that. Only then like it will uh, kind of actually copy the list. 
without creating any reference okay to this one you are clear with this right hello guys please respond okay sir let's say we have this list 3 now if you observe list 3 is kind of nested list okay in nested list uh, let's say i am creating a list 4 now which will be the copy of list 3 okay so now i have taken copy of uh, list 3 into list 4 okay so if you observe this, now I have this. Now I'm trying to make one change here. List four of t of one. So within this uh, sub list, within uh, in the parent list, I'm changing this five. I'm making change to this uh, five number and I'm making it five word, okay? Now if I'm accessing list four, you can see that uh, five is replaced uh like five number is replaced with void right now let me check what is inside list three because we have copied it from list four like three only right so if you observe this i haven't made any change here right So if you observe this, I have only made change in list four and I have changed the second element of the sub list. But you can see that even list three kind of got updated. Even though we have used this copy method, it has updated the uh, list five as well. Like, sorry, list three as well. Okay, uh, the reason being since this is a nested list, okay. The copy method which we have built in for Python list, this is a shallow copy. Okay, shallow copy in the sense it is kind of simple copy. It will copy the list and uh, objects within the list. If the if there are other lists within the list, then it will assign create references for them. Okay. Let's say within list we have this one, right? So list four will create reference for this one from list three okay you, it will create a new altogether new object which will be list four and it will make copyright while copying it will create references for each element here we have list one two three and then four five six right since this is a list again within list it will just create a reference for this okay it won't actually perform actual copy over there so this is where this copy and deep copy uh, will come into picture, okay? So as I said, normal copy is shallow copy. When we perform this normal copy, like in case of some nested lists, if we are making any changes in the inner list, those will be reflected in the other list as well, even though we have performed copy. So to avoid these sort of issues, what we can do is we can uh, uh, use the copy module so copy module is inbuilt python module which offers two types of copies one will be normal copy and one will be deep copy okay now let's uh, practically see what uh, both of them do okay for using this we need to import we need to import this copy library so we will we'll like look what this import is and how it works in uh, coming sections okay so for now just remember this is one module copy and I'm just importing it so that I can use it in R code, okay? So now I have a list three with me, right? List three. So using copy, you can perform both copies. One will be shallow copy and one will be uh, Okay. See, this is, uh, let's say, shallow one, okay?
So if you see in the first line, I have performed shallow copy. OK. In the second line, I have performed deep copy. So this is copy module. Within copy module, I have this copy method which I can access using this dot. This dot signifies from this copy module. Use this copy method. Same in the case in this case from this copy module use this deep copy method. OK. So I, I'll explain about those packaging methods and everything in later parts. OK. And now if I see. Shadow list. OK. So uh, now it has uh, this uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? This five is the one which uh, we have changed. Or else, let me just do one thing. Let's take it from here. Now, obviously, we have four, five, six right here. Now, what I'll be doing is shadow this of three of one is equal to five. So I'm making the same change again here. Even this shadow list will be performing the same operation. If I print the shadow list and list three now, you can see that this element, this element was changed in both uh, lists, OK, uh, in the shallow list as well as list three, right? I am reinitializing this list three and shallow and deep list, OK? Now let's say I have performed same change in deep list. I am changing this uh, first, second element in the sub list within this deep list deep, where we have performed deep copy. OK, if now I'll try to print Deep on list three. You can see. So deep list in deep list we have made change. We have changed number five to word five. But this haven't changed our original list, which is list three. So in this case, deep copy as name suggests, it is performing copy deeply. Okay, it will go into the depths. Okay, whichever how many nested levels we are having, it will iterate through each and every object and it will actually kind of create that object instead of a reference. OK, in case of shallow list, uh, the, it will create elements like a reference of these items within list. In case of deep uh, copy, it will actually create object itself. It will initially create this list three object like uh, an empty list and it will iteratively copy each and every object from the list three in deep copy. So using using deep copy, it's kind of we can avoid these sort of errors like uh, we like whatever changes we are making on deep like deep copy list. It won't be kind of affecting our original list. Understood, right? Hello. Yes, Clear, right? Any yes. questions or queries yes. in this part? No. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. So I think uh, I have given two assignments. I have received a response from only Banu and Varshita. I meant to receive from others. Please, please uh, do the assignments. Okay. That's the only way you can learn things. You have to do practically each and everything. You have to try out each and every method, and you should have like some good hands on before uh, like proceeding for interviews and all, right? Just just uh, try out whatever assignments we are giving. 